So now we're going to move on to coloring and shading our character. So I'm going to take my tie down layers and duplicate them. And I'm going to move them to the top and I'll hide my original tie down layers and lock them off so I don't accidentally edit them. Make sure I do the same with all my other layers. And then I'm going to rename these cat color. So now, just like before with our model sheet, we want to create our invisible strokes for our color art layer. So to do that on all of our frames, we want to go up and press this button, apply to multiple drawings, and then click this button, create color art from line art. And then on my one layer, throughout the whole animation, I now have invisible strokes that I can color in my animation with. And I'll do the same on this layer. So now on my color art layer, I can fill him in with his fur color, which is most of what he's colored in with. So there's a few different ways we can create our color palette. First, let's just make a brand new one by going into our color window. And if you don't see our color window, it's under windows and color. So to create a new palette, we want to click this plus button up here and we'll give our palette a name. And usually I'll keep all these settings the same. I have it on scene and scene palette list. So I'll press okay. And our new palette appears at the bottom of this list right here. So when you make a new palette, it just makes a default color. And to create a new color, we use this plus button. And to remove a color, we use this minus button. So let's use our model sheet that we already created to pick out our colors. So to bring in our model sheet, we're gonna go up to file, import, and images. And we'll browse to where our model sheet is, select it and click open, create single layer, and for this setting, I'll import it as a Toon Boom bitmap drawing. For the alignment, I want it to fit on my stage. So I'm going to select horizontal fit so it stretches to the sides of my scene. For the alpha, I'll set it to straight and press OK. And now we have our image all imported. And it set it to the bottom of our layers. So we're going to click and drag it up to the top. And now we can use this image as reference when we're setting up new colors. So in our palette that we just created, we're going to click plus to add a new color. And you'll see new zero. So to rename a color, we just double click in the middle and it'll let us rename it. We'll call this one fur. And then to edit a color, we want to double click on its outer edge. You want to click this outer edge where this blue box is. So double click and it brings up our color select. And this is the eyedropper tool. This is what will allow us to reference the color that we have here. So the way it works is you have to hold down your mouse and then drag your eyedropper tool to wherever you want to grab the color from and it'll grab that color. That's our fur color. So we're gonna close out of this and then we'll create a new color. Double click in the middle to rename it. We'll call this belt and then we'll double click on the outer edge, use our eyedropper and grab his belt color. So I'll keep going through and keep making colors until I have all the colors that I need. And for this eyedropper tool, you can actually go outside the application. So if you had a second monitor or you resized your window just a little bit, you could actually use the eyedropper on the image file itself. So that way you don't have to import an image into your scene. Once we have all of our colors selected, you could either move your model sheet off to the side and keep it as reference, or you could just delete it. But let's say we wanted to reference the palette on the model sheet that we created. So we need to import our palette from our character model. So to do that, we go into our palettes window and click these three bars up here and go to palettes. So you can either import a palette or link to external. I'm going to select link to external because I want to link it to his model sheet. And if I had a change to his model, like his fur needed to be a different color, as long as I have that linked, if I make a change in his model sheet, then that'll affect all of my animation scenes. So let's link to external. And I just select scene palette list and we'll click browse and I'll navigate to my character model. And then inside of my Toon Boom folder structure, I want to go to palette library and select my cat model. Press open and press OK. And now we have our linked palette, which is right here. If I want to move it to the top, I can use these up and down arrows to move it in position. This is what I'm going to be coloring with. So I'm going to move it to the top. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to change his ink outline to be in this model sheet. And even though they're both the same black color, it's actually referencing this black on this palette, which is not what I want. I want all of my colors to reference this model sheet in case I need to change it later. So even though it's the same color, we're going to select the black from the Adventure Cat model. Go up to our Paint Bucket tool, select Repaint, Affect All Frames again, and we're going to repaint our entire layers. And again, do the same thing on any other layers you want to affect, like his head layer here. 
and it doesn't look like it changed anything, but now, if I were to use my eyedropper, you'll see it selects the black from the model sheet. So now let's fill in on his color art layer. So we're going to go up to our paint bucket, select paint, we'll zoom out a bit, select effect all frames, and since he's mostly fur, we're going to color him in with his fur color by selecting around the whole stage. So now if we go back to our line art, our invisible strokes will disappear and we can see that our cat has been colored in. Well, mostly. If there's any gaps or anything, it'll leave these areas unpainted. So for any sections like this where there's a small gap that it's not filling in, I can use this close gap tool under my paint bucket and it'll just close off the gap for me. So now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna look for any color mistakes. Like here I can see his boot disappearing, so let's fix that. And if I add any drawings to something, I can always click this button again, the create color art from line art, and now I can fill it in. For any really large gaps, I'll just use my stroke tool, which is the hotkey of V, and I'll just add strokes where I need to. And I can use the hotkey of C to close off any small gaps. So if I hold C and draw a line between these two yellow boxes, that'll close off that gap for me, and I can fill it in. And for any parts like this, I want to unpaint them. So this is in between his arms, so I'm going to do a stroke to block off this section. And then I'm going to use my hotkey of U, which is unpaint. And if I click in between his arms, that'll remove that paint layer. You can also use your cutter tool and select it and delete it that way. But I find it easier just to use the hotkey of U to unpaint. So now I have almost all of his colors all finished, but I still need to do the inside of his ear, which I'll need to do manually using the stroke tool. So to do that, I'm going to first fill in the inside of his ear on my main keys. And I'll make sure I'm on the color art layer, select my stroke tool. Then I'll add the inside of his ear like that. Then I'll take these two strokes and copy and paste them onto the next key. Then I'll kind of stretch and skew it move it into place. And here I'm using my perspective tool, which I've mapped to my key of Q. I find this to be a really useful uh, keyboard shortcut because you can use the perspective tool to kind of move lines into place where you want them to be. Then I'll copy these strokes and put it onto the next one. And I'll just repeat this process until I have the strokes on all the frames of his ear, either by copying and pasting the strokes or just drawing them by freehand using the stroke tool. So once I finish doing that, I can just simply click and fill all of his spots on his ear until it's all done. This went by pretty fast. And this is what our final animation looks like. Next, we'll move on to shading the character.